Donkey Kong Country 3 is a weird game. If you play the first two games in the series and then play 3, you'll notice that something is off. That something is just a bit different. And this difference has created a stigma. A stigma that DKC3 is the redheaded stepchild of the Donkey Kong Country franchise. At least in the eyes of the DKC fanbase. A fanbase that over the years has completely forgotten about DKC3. Only bringing it up to say how it failed to live up to the extraordinary expectations set by the previous games in the series. But why? Why is this game so different? Why is it just not as good? Why does the DKC fanbase hate this game? Well, after doing some digging, I think I've narrowed it down to three glaring issues. Too many gimmicky stages, the music is too different, and the tone of the game is vastly different than the first two entries in the series. And now that I had my reasons, I wanted to see if they were actually true. To do this, I compared DKC3 to DKC1 and 2 in these three categories, to see if the hate for this game was rightly justified. The following are my results. So, the first major issue I looked at was the too many gimmicky stages critique. To do this, I compared every stage in DKC1, 2, and 3, and counted the number of gimmicky stages in each. But before I did that, I had to define what exactly a gimmicky stage was. And to do that, I had to figure out what a quote unquote regular Donkey Kong level was. Once I had that baseline, I could compare every level to it and see if it was truly gimmicky, or if it stayed true to the standard DKC formula. Okay, so basically any level where you're running left to right as one of the cons, I considered a regular level. Killing enemies, blasting from barrels, jumping over gaps, all things that happen in a regular level. So a gimmicky stage is anything that drastically changes this formula, whether that be through movement, controls, or the stage layout. Drastically is the key word here, because there are levels that throw in smaller gimmicks, like these rotating barrels and barrel bayou, that aren't enough on their own to classify a level as gimmicky. Where, as a level like Ripsaw Rage, that is completely different from the regular DKC formula, would classify as such. Okay, so now that we established the rules, let's get on with it. Starting first with DKC1. DKC1 has 8 in total, with levels like Stop and Go Station, Minecart Carnage, and Trick Track Track making the cut. DKC2 has 24 in total, which includes levels like Red Hot Ride, Screech's Sprint, and Castle Crush. And finally, we have DKC3, which has levels like Confused Cliffs, Lightning Lookout, and Poisonous Pipeline, for 24 in total. So, I don't know if you noticed, but DKC2 and 3 have the same amount of gimmicky stages. And since DKC2 has less stages than DKC3, it actually has a higher percentage of them. So, for the first time in this series' illustrious history, we can finally say that the haters were wrong on this one. So, the next criticism I looked at was the music was too different. And look, I know this complaint is completely subjective, but there is some truth to it. The music in DKC1 and 2 were composed almost entirely by David Wise. And if you've ever listened to a David Wise soundtrack, you know he has a particular sound. When do they stop tuning their instruments and play the music? That is the music! DK3-3, however, was composed by Evelyn Fisher. And even though she worked under Wise on the DKC1 soundtrack, she definitely has a different sound. And I don't know a thing about music theory, so I couldn't tell you why that is, but just listen to these three songs, and I think you'll see what I mean.
DKC3 does just sound different. Not bad, just different. And it made sense because it's two different composers working on two different games. But because this complaint is so subjective, I don't feel comfortable calling it either way, so I'll let you guys decide. I'll play two songs from DKC3. They are both from the same level and both titled Waterworld. One was composed by Evelyn Fisher for the SNES version of DKC3, and the other was composed by David Wise for the GBA version. Let me know in the comments which one sounds more Donkey Kong Country to you. So the last complaint we'll look at is that DKC3 is totally different than 1 and 2. DKC1, and especially 2, generally have a pretty dark tone. With most of the levels being set in dark mines, creepy swamps, and haunted woods. Fans argue that DKC3 trades in this dark tone for a more light and happy atmosphere. And again, that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but just like with the music, it is different than the first two games in the series. But let's see if the fans are right. Let's see if DKC3 really is a lighter slash happier game. To do this, I went through every level and overworld and determined if it was tonally dark or tonally light. If a level was generally bright and cheery, I counted it as a light level. If it was dark and foreboding, I threw it on the dark side. Music and level theming also played an important role as some levels like Ripsaw Rage were visibly bright, but had anxiety inducing music and a giant saw trying to murder you. So obviously I placed it on the dark side. This obviously isn't an exact science and came down to me making a lot of judgement calls, but I think the results made sense in the end. Let's start off first with DKC1. So, for lighter levels, we have stuff like Jungle Hijinks, Barrel Cannon Canyon, and Millstone Mayhem. And for darker, we have levels like Ropey Rampage, Reptile Rumble, and Coral Capers. There was 9 light levels and 24 dark in total. As for the overworlds, DKC1 had 4 light and 2 dark. DKC2 had 13 light levels and 26 dark and all of its 8 overworlds I considered dark. And last but not least, DKC3. 22 of DKC3's 40 levels I considered light, and 18 of them I considered dark. Out of all 3 games, it had by far the most light themed levels, and it was the only game to have more light tone levels than dark. It also had the most light themed overworlds with 8, while not having a single dark one. So, I think the fans saying that the tone is different in DKC3 are right. DKC3 only had 45% dark levels while 2 had 66%, and 1 had a whopping 73. Either way, I'm saying the fans are right on this one. So there you have it. We've looked at all 3 complaints and for the first time in this series history, the fans weren't right. Sure, the game isn't as dark as DKC1 and 2, but the levels aren't more gimmicky. As for the music, there's definitely something there, but ultimately it's too subjective to be sure either way. But regardless, the fanbase wasn't right. DKC3 may be a black sheep, but it's also fucking awesome. So let me say something now that I've been waiting to say since I've started this series. Fuck the haters, fuck the fanbase, kitty con forever, baby. Shower you with coconut cream pie.